Hello, today we are going to walk through creating a new basic widget. This is using the Stacks Drupal 8 module. If you do not have if you have not set up the Stacks module before, I recommend going through the previous screencast or taking a look at the README file. So to get started, I installed Stacks locally. You'll want to go to Structure Stacks Manage Widget Bundles and then add a widget entity type and give your new basic widget a name. I'm calling it Chris New Widget. You'll also want to ref, uh, make a note of the machine name of your new basic widget. You'll need this um, for the directory name in your theme along with the template variation file names. From here, you'll want to go to the Manage Fields page of your new widget. And then just add whatever fields you want available for this widget. I'm going to go through and add some testing ones just to give us an idea on what, what you can do here. So we'll call this simple text. We'll add a body field. We'll add an image field. And then we'll add a link field. And we're doing this just to give you an idea in, in the types of, of fields you can add and, and how those look from the template perspective. So we'll just finish this guy. Okay, so we've added uh, a new wid a new basic widget with fields. Now this is not going to immediately appear on the stacks fields you added to content types. To do that you have to go to each of those fields and enable this new widget. So I have added a stacks field to the basic page content type. We've got a stacks field here. I'm going to go to manage form display, go to the settings, and I'm going to enable here. I've already got it enabled, but if you add a new widget this this option is not going to be enabled. So you want to check it, hit update, and then save. So that, that gets uh, a lot of the work, but it's, it's still not fully connected because we do not have any template variations. So to do that, you'll want to go to your, your theme. You should have a stacks folder in your theme at, at this point. You're going to want to create a new directory for your new widget. So uh, in this case, it's Chris new widget. You'll want to replace all underscores with dashes. So that would be Chris dash new dash widget. And then you can reference the default widgets if, if, if you forget what to do here, but you'll want to create uh, the folder structure under your new widget folder. So this is a image folder, and then I've got a templates folder. And then, so that, that creates the basic folder structure, but we'll need to create a default variation. At a minimum, you'll want to create the default variation, but you can create as many variations as you want. So we'll call, we'll create a new file. So the, the, this is documented in the readme, but the, the, um, the structure of, of the, the file name for templates goes dm dash dash your widget name, so it's chris dash new dot widget in this case then go dash dash variation name so it's default dot html dot twig oops <clears throat> if you if you want if you're creating other variations you could replace default with 
whatever you want, like new variation. But in this case, we're just going to keep it at default. I like to reference uh, the default templates just to make sure I've got the name right. So that, that creates a default variation. We're going to just add some HTML. So let's go just something that, uh, that tells us we're hitting this template file. So after you do that, um, the last step after you add, create a new template variation is you're going to want to clear cache, clear the Drupal cache. While that's loading, I'm going to go to the content page and I'm going to add a new page, new basic page. Click add new widget and your new widget that we just created should appear in the drop down. Let's give it a name and then our variation. So we only have a default one, so that's selected. And then next. Here, all of the fields you added to this widget will show up here. So I'm just going to enter testing data just to give us an idea on how this looks. Hit add widget, save and publish. Now, on the front end, we can confirm it is in fact hitting our new template file here. So, one thing I'll just point out briefly here while, while we're in here, if you make an update, so I'm just going to add test here. If you make an update to the template file and refresh the page, if it doesn't reflect your changes, that means you'll have to clear cache. Now what you can do, uh, clear the Drupal cache, what you can do to avoid having to clear the Drupal cache every time you make updates to the template file is to enable the Drupal 8 twig debug mode and that will do what we just saw here is when I uh, when I make, a, when I save a, the, a change to the file and then just refresh it automatically picks up the change. So that makes uh, local development quite a bit faster since you don't have to constantly clear Drupal cache. So at this point, we're hitting our template file. We're, we're, we've created a basic, a new basic widget, but our template isn't outputting any of the data we have available in the widget. So I'm going to reference the default template file that's included in that. So I've got the default text widget template file. At the top here, we've got a twig comment that has this Kint fields code. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here. So what this does is this will, will output in a way that, that's much easier to read all of the available options in this fields array. But in order for this to work, you will have to have the devl kint module enabled on your site. If you, if you add this and you hit save and you refresh, if you get a fatal error, that probably means you do not have that module enabled, so you want to do that. And this is only meant for local or, or development um, during the development phase. You do not want to push this to live. So I'm just going to add this in its save and then refresh. So what we'll see here is that it added this array. And if I minimize or collapse the options here, we can see it has all four of the fields that I have on my basic widget. So I'm just going to go through each of these and print these in the template. So we've got field my body. So I'm going to just print each one. So we go fields dot my body. Since this has a markup, you don't have to re reference the markup. You can just call the that variable itself, and it will print the HTML. Let's let's save that. And see, okay, it is in fact printing that data. So let's go to the next one. So we've got an image field. Now the image field is a little different than a, than a text field because we have different sub variables available. So in this case, we have URL, the title, the alt, and then we have a URI. If you wanted to, to say include the um, display the image as a background image on a, on a div, you could access the URL of the image direct, directly. 
and that, that gives you some flexibility. The URI, we use that to um, output the image using a view mode. So I'm going to open up the default text widget template, and I'm going to copy some of the code they have in there because sometimes I forget how to do this. But this is kind of one, one way you can reference image fields in your basic widgets. In this case, I am going to call this specific field, and then I'm going to output it using the thumbnail in, uh, Drupal 8 image style, and then I attach a separate um, a separate argument that that allows you to attach a, a, a unique class. So let's let's see what this does. Okay, so we're outputting our image as a thumbnail. So that works. Our next one is the link field. Now the link field is similar to the image field in that we attach some some specific sub variables that gives you some flexibility in how to work with it. So you could, for example, reference the URL in the title of the link here, or you can call HTML. We're just going to call HTML because it outputs the, uh, the, the link as just an HTML link. So we're going to call this one link fields and then you don't want, you don't want quotes. Okay, so just outputted the link with the correct URL. And then the last one is just our simple text field, which works um, in the exact same way as our body field. So simple text fields dot <clears throat> simple text. So that 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 goes through doing that. I like to use like the, this kint output just it makes it easy if you forget the exact field names of all the fields on, on your widget. Um, it just makes it a little easier to access and you can also see oh yeah that, that we have access to the URL fields for links for example. Um, it, it'll tell you all that info information. So that covers the basics. One thing I'm gonna do here so we have I'm going to go ahead and comment this out, this Kint call, since we don't need that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and create a new variation. We're going to call this new variation. I want to use dashes instead of underscores. And then I'm going to Put a parentheses under this so we know this is hitting this. Also, what I'm going to do is um, you'll you may re remember when we added this new widget instance when we when we were selecting the variation, there was a preview image that showed up, and a preview image um, shows up for each widget variation or template variation. To customize that preview image, we this is what this image directory is meant for. So, so to do that, you'll want to create the preview image as a, as a JPEG image on your computer, and you'll want to give it a certain file name. And this is documented in the, in the readme file, but I'm just going to paste it in here. Um, so we've got preview dash dash widget machine name. So I think ours was Chris test widget. Just verify that's right. And that was Chris new widget. Chris new widget and then our variation name. So we just call the new variation. So where you where you want to put that is um, you want to put that in the image directory of the the widget template directory, which is in your stacks directory. So I'm going to that that directory here. I paste that in. If we go and edit this node, 
not a new one. It will automatically pull in any preview images that you add. These don't line up because they're not the same size, but yeah, you can. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you you have the section or how the section looks from the content editor's perspective. So let's just make sure that we're hitting our new variation template. <clears throat> Save. Okay, so one thing we didn't do here, and this is probably why it's not getting hit, is when we added a new variation, we did not clear the Drupal cache. So let's clear cache. It's still displaying the previous one. If we refresh. There we go. Okay, so our new variation is showing up here. And yeah, that covers the basics. If you encounter any problems or issues, or have any questions, please post on the issue queue on the Drupal.org project page.